Yeah, I, um, I believe that journalism um, has the great potential to impact lives um, in developing countries. Um, but I and, I and I think that um, as a journalist, we have to we have to consider that um, writing about these people's lives um, comes with a great responsibility as well. That um, writing about these people's stories has the potential to do uh, to, to do great good, but also a great deal of harm. Um, it's very easy, for example, with myself writing about uh, the struggles of former child soldiers in Uganda, it's very easy to compound uh, stereotypes, um, not only of Africa, but of former combatants. So for example, um, former combatants aren't only uh, young men. Um, and also we have this, there's a stereotype that just when these um, former combatants have left the LRA, we assume that life um, is suddenly much better for them, and that's not really the case. So. Journalism allows us to um, not uh, well, basically, to tell these people's stories, uh, to educate people back here in Canada. But um, but as I said, we have to we have to. I, th I think as a journalist, we have a role to to challenge these stereotypes, not compound them. Um, we have to find new ways to try and engage the audience about about these uh, about these issues. Um, but I think, um, as I said. Um, with, with writing about these people's stories, there is a great responsibility because there's um, there's also the ability to do a great deal of harm. And and I know one journalist who covered um, some of these uh, women's stories in Uganda, whereby he effectively uh, um, announced. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, I, I guess I should say that, but by by accident, he. Uh, exposed to the rest of the community that this woman was indeed a former child soldier. Um, he also made up details about her, uh, about the fact that she was um, sleeping with a with a Boda Boda driver, and um, so that irresponsibility led to the to her having to leave her former community. Um, so we have to really bear that um, in mind, I believe. Um, but I um, I think it behooves journalists as well to to be advocates for their cause. I'm I'm a great believer in active activist journalism. I don't think that uh, I, I, th I think it's hard to be objective um, often about the stories that you're telling about about these people's lives. Um, I think that often a story, um, it can be a story in Canada um, about uh, the, homeless pop uh, the homeless population or about former child soldiers in Uganda, but I think any, any story by its very nature is centrifugal. I don't think you can be objective. I don't think, I think it's very hard to maintain this sort of uh, scientific objectivity. Um, so I think it behooves a journalist to, to try and engage uh, the audience by, uh, by passionate writing um, and just basically just to grab the audience by the lapels as they're drinking their latte over their you know, Sunday morning paper. Um, that it's, it's, it's by doing that, by working hand in hand with, with people in these developing countries that you're going to hopefully um, uh, engage, engage your reader. I think journalism has the capacity to to break stereotypes. Um, myself, I've I've worked extensively in Africa and in Uganda and South Sudan, and and I find it sickening when I see articles written by journalists that perpetuate uh, the stereotype of of Africa, the the continent, its people as being backward, uh, violent, um, and really, the, you know, just just a continent of despair, basically. So. Um, I'm always trying to look at how we can challenge these stereotypes. Um, and actually, when when I was research, when I was doing my IDRC funded research in Northern Uganda, um, I was uh, I was trying to persuade a former child soldier to 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 be interviewed by myself. And the first question she said to me was, "Why should I talk to you?" Um, you know, she had spoken to researchers and journalists before, and she said, "You know, they're always just interested in." my abduction by the Lord's Resistance Army, how I was gang raped, how I was beaten, how I was forced to kill my own family. Um, nothing positive has ever come out of that, so why should I talk to you? So I basically said to this, to this uh, lady, uh, Jennifer, I said, what I'm trying to do is to, uh, is to help you tell your own story, is to, to help you tell your own story, and, and I want to tell people back in Canada that, first of all, um, it's not, it wasn't just women 
uh, sorry, excuse me, it, it wasn't just uh, young boys or men that were abducted, it was women as well. Um, there's this really common stereotype in the media uh, and in film. Uh, you know, we, we've all seen the image of the young boy with, uh, you know, uh, with bullets wrapped around his neck, holding a Kalashnikov, but we don't realize that uh, women also fought and often they were expected to be um, a wife, a mother and a soldier. That often they would be expected to string their babies on their backs and go into battle. Um, so that's one misconception that I said that I wanted to challenge. And possibly more importantly, um, we have this notion, and you know, this was sort of perpetuated by the Coney 2012 phenomenon last year, that when um, former abductees come back to their former communities, we just assume that everything is okay. There's been very little done um, in the media about what's happened to these women and male abductees since they've come back. Um, and what many people don't realize is that life is arguably more challenging than it was in the bush with the LRA. So, um, I mean, and, and arguably my research showed that this is worse for uh, female abductees than male abductees. So many of these women have come back with uh, children, uh, they're single parents. Um, one, uh, one woman that I, interv uh, that I interviewed and I worked with quite closely, Alice, uh, she's come back with, um, with, a, uh, with PTSD that isn't being uh, treated um, uh, through through counselling, I mean there is counselling there, but it's it's laughably inadequate. Um, and she she basically said to me that um, in many ways she actually misses being with the LRA because she was provided for. She had uh, an elevated status within the armed group that she doesn't have in what is a very patriarchal Ugandan society. And and frankly, uh, you know the LRA provided for her better than the Ugandan government is doing.